Welcome to the Knife Junkie Deep Cut. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and with me today is Ian Lewis. Ian is a dear old friend of mine and a two-time guest on the podcast, episode eight and episode 160, where we talk about all things martial arts. He, ha he is an expert in uh, a number of um, martial arts styles that heavily involve knives. Uh, he's certified in Jeet Kune Do Kali and in... Um, uh, PFS, which also has knives, and MDS, which also has knives. So anyway, we wanted to talk a bit about uh, tactical knives and a little bit about uh, you're focusing on Bastinelli. We'll roll in some other knives. And uh, well, this is a deep cut, so we're just going to go deep for a few minutes and uh, and then dip. So Ian, welcome to the deep cut. <laughs> nice to have thank you here. You. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Love it. So uh, when I when I brought up the concept to you uh, to talk about Bastinelli knives at length and you know, bring in some other combat knives for comparison and such, you you jumped at it. What is it about Bastinelli knives uh, that you love so much? So to start, I'd say the craftsmanship is is just amazing. Like they um, the the visual aspects for me the materials used the ergonomics of the hand the ergonomics of the handles and the blade shape all of that are amazing and also him as bastian as a person then his philosophy behind uh, knife making and his understanding on what the knife is going to be used for and the uh the prototype process that goes through i believe most of his knives whether it be a martial tool like the uh separatory here you know, and the cut tests used and the philosophy behind the knife. And then him as an actual person, all of that together is what, for me, makes it the best. Uh, he's, for me, the best knife. You can't say the best knife maker, but he's, for me, he's the best. Yeah, and he's a great guy. I actually, I know him personally through Fred Mastro. Yeah, we've had him on the show here a couple of times. Uh, he's a really, really personable guy and uh, uh, a classy fellow. And, and he's got... European aesthetics, and uh, but but a um, but an understanding of these kind of brutal uh, arts and the and the purposes these knives might be put to, but a lot of it, like you said, is aesthetics. I'm uh, I mean I'm looking right here at the uh, at the Drago Tack, which is not an average looking knife in any way, and uh, you look at this knife and you can tell right away that it was designed for for the hand, um, obviously. Uh, just in, in how it's put together. And so f this is something I want to ask you, Ian, because I'm, I'm always conflicted. I have knives in both categories, but uh, this is a very unneutral handle. It, it tells your hand where it needs to be, whether you're kind of in Filipino grip or way back here in saber grip or, um, you know, it dictates through all these little grooves and scallops where you should be. As an expert in in Kali and uh, these other arts, do you want a neutral handle? Yeah, I think I think uh, like uh, the chopper, for example, this new beauty I got from him. Uh, it has a very, uh, I guess, neutral handle, like you're calling it. I can use it in multiple different grips. I can go edge in. I can go edge out. You know, I can reinforce my thumb on the back for, for pressure cutting. I can reinforce my thumb on the back and reverse grip for power slashing and stabbing if need be, it being a tactical blade. Um, and I, but I like options, you know, like I like a, a simple design, but a, it's a wonderful design at that too. You know, it's just beautifully made. Um, I'm excited for you to feel the weight of it. You know, when I see it next, it's just, it's a, it's every position it's comfortable in any position I draw it in, and the jimping, I'm not sure if you can see on the back of the blade, it goes all the way up. Oh, the no, I cannot. So it has put, put it way close. Put it right up close. Oh, yeah, I see it. So it's got three one, runs. Two, and then it has a space in between, and then it comes up here. So, uh, but any any position, I'm, I, you know, I'm moving in, I can, you know, I can see, I can conceal it. I can have different grips with it and it's uh so i do like the overall i like the handle where i can maneuver the knife easily whereas uh let's say take the py the protect yourself from bastinelli knives you see the handle kind of dictates your grip which is also very very efficient too you know it has the um finger placement here so i guess this is a better view the finger comes right in like this 
and then the same for reverse grip I can cap the knife and this is this was designed by Fred Mastro it's a, obviously a tactical blade uh, but for drawing in reverse grip it has a very good grip going back to that grip philosophy yeah. and then going a good grip in this position whether I'm slashing or stabbing whatever I'm doing put so, the, I'm sorry before you put that away Ian take it out and 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 uh, if you would Jim go full on this I just want to see uh, what the blade tip looks like does this have two distinct grinds at the tip uh let's see it's hard to tell with that black oh there i see okay no it's just sort of triangular shaped of it's sort of tanto shaped in profile but then when you look at the blade itself it doesn't have those two distinct surfaces uh at the tip and then on the flat that is such a beautiful knife and i i know from uh well from knowing you that you used to carry that 24 7 that used to be your everyday carry yes yeah it's uh i'd say it's like um all the time you know i, I would carry it and uh, in combatives and self-defense, and just to play if you're new with, with knives, um, you don't want to do something dumb, like send yourself to the hospital, <clears throat> me. <laughs> so, so there's the trainer right here, which is the PY trainer, and it's exact model. It's only like $40. It's, a, it's, just, it's a wonderful deal. It has the, the clip on the back for drawing in the reverse grip position. And it allows you, It's if I take out the real blade next to this one, you can see how similar um, they are. And obviously the the real, the live blade is, is slimmer, but the handles are the same, you know? And so when you're training, it gives you that, that realistic feeling of drawing something that's similar to the knife that you would actually be carrying. Right. This, this being a tactical blade, it's important to have a knife that is as similar as possible. So, so uh, does the um, it, does the weight uh, correlate? Is it the same weight as the real knife? And uh, are you experiencing? In other words, when you're training with that, is it is it as close to possible the same uh, experience as wielding the other? It is. And me, me personally, I like how I don't know if you can see this. The this is the live blade. This is the trainer. The trainer handle is a little bit thicker. And I like that for training because it it uh, gives me a little more grip integrity to practice my my draws. But I prefer the slimmer handle on the real blade. So when I make a connection and, and draw that blade, it fits in my hand mm -hmm. a little bit better. But this fits equally as well. So it is it's as similar as you can get. And it, and but it's the draw that translates over the best. I mean I've. Um, you know, I'll be doing an MDS technique and practice taking the knife out and putting it back in on my belt from the position that I carry the blade in. And it's the same mechanics of drawing and putting away the live blade. It's just a, it's just a sleeker profile, uh, profile. So it's just, it's a really fun concept. It's a great deal for a trainer. I mean, some of the aluminum ones are like $35 a blade. This is like 40, 45 bucks. I think you can get it even on knife center. And uh, it's, it's great, you know, and it comes even with the belt loop too. And you can adjust the different carry positions on the back and you know it's just it's high quality it's like a hard plastic material you know, it's good for you know overall training simulation so, training. so learn how to use that razor sharp blade with something that's not gonna not gonna cut so uh, tell me how important you think it is we got a, a bit into this uh on the podcast we just recorded uh recently but um Tell me how important it is to practice drawing. You know, if you have any inkling about carrying a knife for self-defense, especially a folder, I mean, because with folders, you're talking about manipulating the thing to, to open up in a high stress situation. So uh, I, I just want you to touch on the importance of training, not just, not just techniques and what you're gonna do with it, slashes and thrusts and all that stuff, footwork, but also how you're actually gonna bring it to bear. Yeah, absolutely. And Bob, I just want to let you know, it just said 10%. Okay. Um, so, but so to answer that question, um, I, I love to train in different scenarios with, uh, to practice the knife, whether someone has grabbed the knife on my belt, or if they are grabbing my body and I need to deploy the weapon or they're reaching for my weapon. And I'll practice that in simulation training. And I'll also just practicing drawing and concealing it in, in my free time for fun as well, whether I'm moving a jacket out of the way and drawing the blade out and putting it back like in the winter time, mm -hmm. or if it's open carry in the summertime and it's just sitting on the outside of my t-shirt, 
you know, the, the scenario is different. So do you open carry here in Virginia like that? Sometimes, rarely, rarely, rarely. Uh, okay. So um, you said it says 20% and I, I don't want to uh, rush it, but I do want to see your best in LA. So let, let's see them. Let's see a parade. And while you're getting them out, I want to show you, I have a small parade. I have the large, the big Drago tack and the small Drago tack. And then I have the, uh, the little Karambit, the diagnostic on the back of my work ID, which yeah. I cannot find, which is concerning. But so show me your stuff. Okay, so the PY is the first blade, uh, Fred Mastro design. That's got a crowned spine, right? It's rounded on the spine of the blade. Yes. yes. Italian, baby. Yeah. Okay. The second one is my newest one. It's the chopper. That's a beautiful blade. I instantly fell in love with it. And I, you know, the more I carry it, it's like a, it's like a relationship, you know, it just gets, it gets better, you know, so it's, it's beautiful. And then the next one is the Pika Karambit designed by Doug Markaida. So if I hold this like this, very slim, extremely lightweight. It's about an inch and a half blade. I believe it fits in the hand really well. I can also go forward grip with this and move around. So, so the one I was talking about, the diagnostic that I carry around my neck every day, is the two finger version of that. So the ring goes around your, your, uh, your swear word finger, and then your, geez, what am I, ten years old? And and your, uh, and your uh, thumb goes on the back. It's not really for reverse grip, and I love that little thing. And last but not least, the mm. separator, which is you know, it's um, this was actually a gift from some of my students. Um, a couple of years back, and it's uh, it's a obviously mainly a collector item until the apocalypse starts. But <laughs> it's uh, I think a 13 inch blade. It's based off of a Filipino ganunting. It's made by Fox Italy. Um, it's beautifully crafted. It's very very slim on the back. It, it could almost have a false edge if you you wanted to add that. And um, just the handle, I don't know if they can, everyone can see, but it's, yeah, it's just, it's a beautiful handle. And you can see the Fox Italy nice. here. And it's got a nice lanyard hole on the end of it as well. And then it comes in a beautiful handmade leather sheath. Gorgeous. And it's got that little retention thing on top. It does. And that has a little Bastinelli logo here. So that knife, the separateur is based on this, the, uh, the traditional Filipino ganunting uh, with that, that sort of hooked that hawkbill blade and uh, that nice, nice big ergonomic handle. Uh, I have to get a separateur. I, first of all, I love the name. I mean, obviously, it's a French word for separator or or cleave, you know, cleave thing, something that halves things. Uh, so I love the name. But uh, yeah, I, I think I think he's a true. Uh, a part of his logo is tactical art, and I think his his work is really, really artful and really, really beautiful. Um, so actually, uh, I, I think since you said your, you said, what about your red folder? Someone stole it? I, I believe, yes, I, I, I believe. So the red folder was a beautiful folder uh, by him made by Lion Steel Italy. And I don't have one of those to give you, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook you up and, uh, and replace your red folder with this, uh, with this Drago tack. And I'm, I'm going to give this to you because I have the big Drago tack. And whenever I carry a Drago tag, it's this. So uh, if, if you would accept, I will give you this. Uh, that is an incredible gift. I will absolutely accept. Thank you so much. Awesome. My pleasure. Yeah, love it. Love it. When, when, uh, when we see each other in person, which should be shortly here, uh, I'll hand it to you in person. Absolutely. Uh, I, I want to talk about before your camera craps out, Bastinelli's got an interesting thing going on. The Pika Karambit you have is an example of what I'm talking about, but he's got a lot of very small uh, but tactically minded knives. He has the ones that he designed uh, the, uh, with um, the Bicor, I think, with uh, Doug Markaita. It's to like a half a pair of scissors with a tiny little blade. Um, he's got a number of those really small but really wicked little uh, little implements. Uh, what do you think the benefit of those tiny little knives are? Do you think they work? Um, absolutely. And just real quick, Bob, if for some reason this cuts out, will you be able to keep it? Yeah, we'll keep it. And, and we'll just say, I'll say goodbye to you right now. See you, man. Okay, great, great. But tell me yeah. what you think of those things. I'm just gonna, yeah. So, uh, 
All of them, like the Pika, it's super lightweight, concealable. Um, it's so light, you just, for, uh, you know, it's easy to forget that it's on you, which is um, can be a good and bad thing, actually. But uh, it's, I love the Picor. I actually don't have it. I'm looking at that as my next one uh, for a backup carry because I love the Pika and I love uh, Karambits, but I like the straight edge more. There's more possibilities with it. There's also another one called the Spade by Doug yes. Markaida, which is beautiful as well. And there are four um, models, four blade styles for the spade. Yep, yep. And then, uh, so, but the whole, the concept of the smaller knife and the carry options and the different, the, uh, the UD clip, which this is called on the back and the different carry options for it are endless, you know, possibilities for drawing and carry. And it's just, it's a, it's a great concept. And they're great backup blades too. You know, if somebody uh, like a law enforcement officer doesn't want to add something like this to his duty belt, yeah. you know, because of all the weight, something like this, you take the knife, you, you work with it to create space and then you can take your gun or, you know, whatever you need to do from there. So it's a great um, force multiplier tool as well. You, know? you talk, you talk about all the carry options. I love how he, with the Picor, the, the little straight scissor one, he uh, will oftentimes show his fly, his jeans fly carry where he'll basically clip it into the fly of his jeans. And, and, and if you have a t-shirt on, you can't see the tiny little discreet ring there. So you can yeah, just whip yeah. that thing out. And, uh, I love it. I love it. He's it's great. It's great. He, he obviously loves what he does. He loves manipulating the knives. He does a lot of research with experts and uh, creates some really super cool knives. Um, Ian, I want to thank you for coming on the deep cut and going deep with me on Bastinelli knives. Um, uh, I know one thing's for sure. I need the separateur. Oh, that was yes, rhyming. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> Any responsible adult needs a separateur. Um, and, and there are a number of other cool things uh, coming out of their shop. And and not for nothing, you can get customized things from him, too, with the cool Japanese wrap. Yeah. God, that yeah. stuff is gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. it's uh, uh, I was on the phone with him the other day, and I said, you know, I'm addicted to your knives. <laughs> and he said, it's a good addiction. And I'm like, absolutely. You know, so it's, it's, it's going to continue. It's really the only knife company I can see myself buying over and over and over again you know it's like each mm -hmm. design that comes out because of his philosophy yeah. is is like part of the reason i love them so much you know well it's like how uh, how you're partial to uh how one might be partial to pink floyd or or uh or or uh, anselm kiefer or willem de kooning or wh whomever like whatever the artist whoever the artist is he's got his uh bastinelli's got his style and and most people Love it. If you don't love it, you know, it's not your thing, but uh, yeah. Anyway, sir, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for coming on the deep cut. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Bob. That was great. You got it.